Feeling the change of the air and the physical environment and the smell, the thickness of the air. It's not quite damp, but it definitely has a, it has a different, it has a slight soupiness to it or a smear, as I would say, the mist, the low hanging mist in it that sticks to you. I felt very overwhelmed by the scale of it. Uh, from the outside and the fact that you couldn't see anything from the outside, so it was invisible. We'll break this mountain's heart. What our work makes cannot be enough told. Groundbreaking drama now on Radio 4, Master Rock. Described as a repertoire for a mountain, it takes as its subject the Kruokan Power Station, a pioneering hydroelectric power station inside Ben Kruokan, the highest granite peak in Western Scotland. The piece is performed before a live audience inside the Turbine Hall, 50 years to the day since the power station opened. I think Kruokan's very special as a space because um, even if one doesn't know the history of the space, when you're in it, you can match yourself against the scale because of the blast holes and the drill marks. And you can see where a hand has been at work. So basically I'm doing electronic music uh, with the space. I'm playing with the space as if it were an instrument, a bit like organ music in the church, you know, well, the organ is the instrument, but the church is also part of the instrument, we, thanks to its uh, resonance, the body of the instrument. The three voices exist in, in separate historical times, so they can only intersect or, or interpolate or speak to each other at figurative moments, because they don't, they never meet each other. The poetic, the poetic figures in the work are the points of abstraction that suture together the three voices. I felt at the start as if the requirement could be that the voices would just become part of the natural ecology of sound in, in that cavernous space. I would say it's probably almost necessary to forget, else you might be at risk of having your perceptions crushed by the awareness of the density of the ton of rocks inside which you are a tiny human figurine uh, speaking your little script. And of course then the mural itself sided inside the hall, a huge marquetry mural made by an amateur artist. Um, preserved, perfectly preserved public artwork that has no public um, and how it, how it very plainly narrativises um, the mythology around the site. I am the only woman here. This mural is more real than me. The image is everywhere. The individual nowhere. When we're drilling and blasting into the fresh rock, we're the first ones to have ever laid eyes on it. Master Rock is a documentary work. It's concerned with the real. It's concerned with being true to the reality of certain labour conditions. But it finds the truth in those conditions through a poetic, abstracted voice. I did make interviews with a few surviving tunnel tigers. John Mulholland, who's one of the main voices in the piece. It's very important to have these plumb lines of reality that wait 
the work and to keep the work, keep the work online, like the wee lamps that the tunnel tigers themselves used to move through. I found it um, really overwhelming. Uh, the experience of it. Um, I think the responsibility of representing a group of men, some of whom had sacrificed their lives um, to make the project work. When we are dead and buried, we will be higher up inside this earth than ever we were in life. I was really quite um, exhausted from it. I think it's a combination of the atmosphere itself, um, the responsibility certainly, but it was interesting to see the workers and how they helped, the, how they dealt with it. There is something very unique about that place. You know, some people might say, how does it feel to be something that's so old? But at the same time, you know, that's just in a human estimation of time. And, you know, it could actually be quite a young mountain by its own standards. And... This project's essential that it's live and that it's affected by the ambient buzzes and rattling and thuds, etc. And also, as I say, this kind of thickness of the air. The messiness of that sonic environment, the listener can choose where to listen in it because it's not, it, it isn't all moving together in a, in a very sequential narrative manner. There's lots of bits in it. So there's more space for you to choose where to listen yourself. The turbines teach the granite how to sing rather in the way that a bird begins to mimic a car alarm if it's round it too much. Um, and the other two voices, the tunnel tiger voice and the mural artist voice, only learn from each other because they're both learning how to finish something off that they've started. We hardly never look up from the drilling and blasting. Too dangerous. But this one time we do, we spy around us a mighty granite cave. But then, in seeing it, we're all so disappointed for it looks like we've found the cave, not made it. <laughs> 